I've been buying a lot of cheap, shitty disco lights from eBay recently, mainly because the job I'm working on uh, has a lot of expensive audiovisual equipment, and I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at some really shit audiovisual equipment, particularly stuff with DMX ports that could potentially blow up every light in the network if the isolation between the mains and the low voltage circuitry isn't very good. Now this one was described as having DMX, and it doesn't. It does have the audio playback circuitry, but uh, no DMX at all. So I'll show you what this looks like when it's running. So it basically has a motor that rotates the effect in here and it responds to sound. And it basically just swirls the dots about. It's quite a nice effect. It seems quite sensitive to sound, and when you open it up, and it just bayonet caps open, exposing live connections inside, uh, is this going to swamp the camera out? Yes, it is, but but it'll show you basically what's happening here. So once you remove this, exposing the live connections inside, you've got a little circuit board here that is just on a cam and a motor, and it just minces away continually. And the reason they've done this is to provide movement, but without actual rotation, because then you'd need slip rings. All they need here is a little uh, loop of wire, and it will roughly keep that circuit board in place because the screw in the middle is loose. So let's turn that off now and take a look at this. And one of the nice things about these lights is that they're very modular. So this one has a power supply that is not just powering the LEDs and the control circuitry, which are independent from the audio circuitry, but it's also got a power supply cable going out to the audio circuitry, and from there it's got a couple of uh, pairs of wires going to these speakers. And I have to say, the sound is pretty good. So let's uh, get some stuff out here. Let's uh, remove this screw to get the circuit board off the cam. And as with many of these things, it's one more LEDs. Uh, how many circuits? They've got three sets of circuits here. I'm guessing they're, they call them red, green, and blue, but they're really not. Uh, but I'm guessing they've got two LEDs in the series. Looks like it. Um, and probably just resistors limiting the current. Oh, I can see the power resistors down there. And then the aluminium plate for thermal dissipation. So this unplugs. It's very modular. I will say this circuit board in here is only held on by one screw at one end. Um, this is this one actually has the proper metal pin. It's, it could have been a plastic pin. They've chosen the metal pin. And unlike many of the others, it's uh, not got the sleeve in it. Although all these lights are kind of what you might call double insulated. That none of them actually has an earth connection inside. So if I lift this out, it's got the mains connections going on at one end, it's got the low voltage supply going over to the audio circuitry, and then it's got the low voltage supply that just runs the motor continually. And the circuitry itself Is the usual arrangement. It's got uh, the mains come in, goes through a bridge direct far to this capacitor here, the smoothing capacitor. There is what looks initially like a class Y capacitor, but is that actually connecting across? It's got uh, three pairs of resistors. I'm guessing those are for the LEDs. It's got the the output uh, from the transformer after it's been boosted up. Uh, does it have a little switch mode chip? Or is that all built onto this component here? There's, it's a single set. Uh, there's no surface mount in the back of the board. It's just single sided, but it's a multi side board, a uh, double side board. Um, all I can actually see here, I don't see a dedicated switch mode chip. So I'm guessing it's probably built into this transistor here. I say transistor, it's possibly a complete chip. I would expect that maybe, given the placement of the circuitry, They've actually got the, they've got some of the low voltage circuitry coming back along here. It's a, they start off doing quite well with the separation here. And then it kind of is defeated by the fact it's quite close there. But having said that, unless you were plugging a metal USB stick reference to the, you know, uh, the circuit ground, uh, there's nothing really in here that plug in would pose an electrical risk of contact. So there's a little, um, 8-pin chip down here, which I'm guessing is probably... Uh, where's my magnifying glass? It's probably going to be an op-amp. Uh, no number. What's the other one? The other chip says 16DN8SW. I'm 
guessing. Oh, no, no, I'm talking crap. Uh, it's a ULN2003. That's been used to switch the outputs. So they're using a Darlington transistor to switch the output, the multiple Darlington array, and I can see from looking down here, they've combed a lot of the pins. So the little 8-pin uh, thing is a microcontroller. And I also see a couple of transistors here, which will be the amplifier for this microphone. So that's all logical enough. The audio circuitry, let's screw this together again. Oh, yeah, I should also mention this comes with remote control, as is very common with these little uh, uh, audio modules. So I'm just going to screw this back in and we'll actually try it. Now, the audio is actually really good because, um, because this is a huge boxy container, it's a huge dome, uh, it acts like a loudspeaker very well. Uh, so the audio is, is surprisingly loud on it. Uh, I've just uh, lost all the connectors here. Right, okay, I'm um, just mixing all the connectors up. I suppose you should keep the uh, the motor connector well away from where it can wrap around the motor and get shredded. Let's see if I can uh, dig that connector out. I'll pull it over here. So I'll put this back together and we shall try it. Now this thing also came with a very, very dubious device. It came with uh, a remote control and it also came with this little stick. Now, I have to say, on the listing it shows what looks like a, a USB memory stick, and I thought maybe it's just a memory stick provided so you know you can use it to contain the music. But inside this, and I'll show you, I've not plugged it into my computer, I'm very suspicious about it. Particularly in this day and age of uh, devices called rubber duckies. I don't necessarily think it is a rubber ducky, but I'll, I'll let you assess when I show you what's inside it. So let's... Uh, Let's uh, not, not bother putting this thing... Uh, no, I'll plug it in anyway. I'll plug it in. I'll put it all roughly back together and get this screw in. The hole that this screw goes through is quite big. If I get these screws in the right order, maybe not. Maybe it'll just fall apart when I start it. So let's uh, screw this back down loosely onto the top. Not too tightly. That would be quite exciting. Oh, maybe I should. Hold on. I'm going to do it tight just to see the Armageddon that ensues. Oh no, it's all going to be a disaster. Oh, 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 it's struggling, it's struggling now, it's struggling. Okay. I per will perhaps just loosen that off. I had to do it, sorry. I just wanted to see it uh, commit suicide by uh, strangling itself with its own cable. Right, okay, that's what it's supposed to do. That's better. Okay. So, the audio circuitry, this, it came with this and the remote control. And when you open this up, inside is a blob. It's got a chip on board, plus it's got this little chip here. And the number on that chip, which I wrote down earlier on, hold on. <clears throat> it's an MK25D80CTIG. Now, I think the key numbers here are 25D80C. And if it is what I thought it was, it was like a really low-capacity serial memory chip. And I don't know what's under this blob. I thought maybe it's a Bluetooth receiver, but I don't see an antenna in this. Um, and why would it have a memory chip associated with it? It would either be an extremely low-capacity uh, memory stick, or there's a microcontroller under here, and this is the memory for the microcontroller. I'm not confident. I'm going to keep this, but I'm going to stick it into... Uh, uh, when I get back to the Isle of Man, I'm going to stick it into my Chromebook which is less susceptible to uh, rogue USB devices. And I'm going to see what it, what it is. It's certainly not a USB killer. I'm just being a bit, you know, maybe I'm just being a bit overcautious. So I'm going to put the dome in this. And then I'm going to let you hear what it sounds like. And just out of interest, I got a memory card. I think I've mixed my memory cards up here. I think this is the one that was uh, in it. Now, when you put the memory card into this, Normally I would expect the memory card to push right in and then click. You know that sort of ratchet action, that sort of click in, click out action. And I'd expect it going a lot further, but it feels like it just goes in so far. And then it's just not going any further. And in reality, that is it actually making its connection. It goes in really loosely. It's almost like it's going to fall out. But let's uh, plug it in now. And I recorded some files. <clears throat> recorded some files. And the files I recorded were called 1, 2 and 3. A, B, and C, and then I think it was A1. And I wanted to see what sequence it plays the files in. Does it do it in alphabetic and numeric order? Does it play the files 
in any particular structure, but I found that it plays them randomly. So at the moment, I've got them in the same sequence. Uh, I've got them in the correct sequence as stored onto the card, and you'll, you'll hear when it starts. File name zero. File name one. File name two. These are just the file numbers that I file recorded. Name A. File name B. File name C. And then I recorded some of my own non-copyright music. So let's say I try the remote control. So uh, the sound is actually really good because, as I say, it's a huge container and although the speakers are fairly decent, they're being driven at a modest volume. Now, when you turn it off and on again, the volume automatically reverts down to sort of mid-level and it will just start munching its way through the files again from the beginning. File name zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to re-record uh, that. I'm going to pull this uh, card out. <coughs> And I'm going to jiggle all the random the files around randomly and show you that it doesn't play them in numeric order like it was there. It will just play them in any order. So I'm just going to pause momentarily while I do that, and then we'll try it again. Okay, so now I've reloaded the memory card with the files in a different form. Uh, basically speaking, I deleted it and loaded it. The first file I dragged into it was C. The second file I dragged was 2, and then uh, the So Much YouTube tunes. So now it'll play them. File name C. File name 2. So uh, it does just play them in sequence. So um, that's quite interesting. Even just for the audio module, it's it's good. Now, if you notice before the before it started playing like A, B, and C, there was a sort of zit noise. That was actually my recording that was doing that. It was just a, a anomaly of the way I recorded them. But, um, yeah, you know, it's okay. This uh, this thing is quite good in a sense. It's quite loud. It has a good bright visual effect. And I really like the, it sounds good. I really like this little module. I know this is just a standard generic eBay module, but it shows that, you know, it has potential for places that you want autonomous sound playback. And Given that you can just drag the files on in the order you want them to play, if you were, if you had, say, a fairground attraction you wanted to actually play sort of jingles or every so often, you could use that technique of recording um, or, or using their, their, their available pre-recorded MP3s that are just basically uh, like 30, second, 30 seconds of silence or a minute of silence, and you could intersperse that with jingles. And this could make, basically a very simple uh, jingle player with built-in speakers or driving an external speaker File name two. or just playing music like a standalone jukebox. So um, yeah, this is, I quite like this. Um, it's uh, one of the first that arrived and it uh, seems pretty good so far. I want to elaborate on one thing I mentioned in the video, and that was about this device not knowing what it is, and the fact it's got the uh, fairly small serial memory chip and the blob. Now, there's a device available called a rubber ducky, and it's a malicious device. It's designed for hacking, and it comes in the form of a little USB dongle. And you plug it in, and instead of uh, appearing as like, a memory stick or anything like that, it appears as a keyboard. And because a keyboard is a fairly innocent device, the computer says, Okay, just no need to ask permission, let's just connect to this keyboard. Whereupon the rubber ducky executes at very high speed keystroke commands and it could access your command line interface. It can open up ports for a hacker to access your computer later on. It can, it can uh, download uh, or email out. It can send out information uh, by direct commands to, for sending your files to a remote location or it can store them back on the card or it can um, directly load in as just raw keystrokes, malware. It can put in malicious script into the computer and uh, change configuration settings. So that's why I wasn't too keen to plug this into the computer without knowing what it is. As I say, it doesn't really have the telltale signs of looking like a Bluetooth uh, receiver for... I mean, that was one original thought. My two thoughts originally were that it could have been a, a low... 
a volume memory stick for just to demonstrate you can put your music in this and plug it into that unit or it could have been a Bluetooth receiver for connecting your phone to that uh, device, the audio player. But um, yeah, I don't know what this is and I'm not willing to plug it into my computer to find out. So that will be, I'll be keeping this, but as I say, I'll, I'll be going back to the Isle of Man uh, after this job and then I shall plug it into my Chromebook and see what happens, what it appears as, just out of interest, because the Chromebook isn't affected by these things yet.